Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Monday, it's Rebecca Undum and you are watching Rebecca Undum Live, the place where high achieving women in small towns go to get a hit of inspiration to start their week. And I'm super excited to have you all um, joining me as you come on, please say good morning. I would love to say hi. Um, I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. I don't know what was cooking for you, but I, my oldest child had a birthday, so he turned nine this weekend and it's just wild, isn't it? I think you always have those moments where you're like, how is time going by so fast? Uh, it's a little alarming, um, but it was really cool. It's really great. Hey, good morning, Jayette. Good to see you. Um, for those of you that are joining me and maybe haven't um, been with us before, and I always say too, like to the women that, there's this core group of women that hang with me every Monday, which is so awesome. Um, please share the video. Like if you, especially if you think you know somebody. Today, I'll just say the the, the person that needs the video today are the people pleasers in your life. So if you have some friends um, that really struggle with being people pleasers, send this video to them, share it, get them in here live with us. So as you're kind of doing that, um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Rebecca Undem. I wrote a book called How Mommy Got Her Groove Back. And my real intention is to help um, women that have ever felt just like I felt in the middle of their small towns um, going, oh my gosh, like how am I gonna vibe as high as I wanna vibe and, and still keep my sanity? So um, the community, the Groove Seekers community, that is what that group is for. It's for women just like that. Um, because the size of our life is not determined by our zip code. Um, I should really hashtag that or something. Um, I think Gary V, if you guys have ever watched Gary V, I think he has said your hustle is not predicated by your zip code. Um, oh, Dan, you're not getting anything coming through. That's not good. Can anybody else kind of confirm? What, what is up with the Monday morning issues? Anybody else tell me what's happening, what they're seeing? Can you hear me? Can you see me? So Jayette, I know came on. She said, good morning. Can somebody tell me if they can hear me and see me? So tricky. All right. I'm gonna post a comment. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm like, oh crap, nobody is commenting. Okay, so Jayette said I'm fine. Mary said I'm fine. So, oh, Deanne, I don't know. I'll just, Deanne, I'm just gonna say leave and come back. <laughs> and I'll say, please come back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, last, last uh, Monday, we had issues. We had ish issues. I've got issues besides just the feed not working. Let's be real. Um, but hopefully she can come back and join us. So great, Cheryl. Thank you guys so much for saying that you can see it. I always have that moment of panic. Last Monday, just everything was kind of, it was all, I think, um, pixelated. So it wasn't working real well. Okay, so God, I don't even know what I was talking about. Hi, Flo. I'll just say hi to you guys. Maybe someone can get me back on track. Holy balls. Okay, so yeah, so I think I was talking about the free group um, and really the whole point is just to have a space where we can have elevated conversation. Um, I don't know what you guys feel like in your small towns if you happen to be living in a small town like I do, but there are times you just look around and you go, oh, like how am I gonna, how am I gonna shine? How am I gonna be like me? How am I gonna be my fullest, most beautiful self in this environment? And we don't always get to, we pick the environment no matter what. We talked about this a couple weeks ago on the live show. Um, we always get to technically pick, but when you're married or there's a reason that you're, that you're where you're at, I refuse to, to say that I'm stuck. I'm, not, I'm never ever stuck and yet neither are you, but there sometimes are circumstances that cause us to, to need to stay um, so just saying, yeah, we're just going to change the environment. Yeah, it's never that easy. So that is what we jam about at Rebecca Undum Live. The Groove Seekers community is free. Um, and that is really what we dive deeply into in Groove School, the monthly coaching program where um, we really get deep into what it is that you're working on and we try to help you make specific changes in your life. We've got Jesse, good morning. And Rhonda, good morning. Oh, okay, it's great to see you guys. Coffee. Again, I, I said to myself this morning, I am not going to complain about the weather today. I have been like slamming the vitamin D like a crazy person because you guys, we got a, a few healthy inches of snow again yesterday. 
Um, and apparently we are supposed to get another good dose of snow later this week. It's getting a little bit insane. Somebody over the weekend um, made the mistake of saying to me and to anybody really, do you know what the temperature was a year ago today? It was like 60, 62 degrees and we're still getting snow on the regular. So I don't know what you guys are dealing with. Love to know. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna we're gonna get into the topic here. So today we are talking about, um, and this is this is actually a workshop that I've done. So I'll just tell you, and I'll tell you guys this too. This is something important. Maybe you don't realize. Like, if you hear something, um, um, a topic or something that we talk about that you think, oh my gosh, like you have a group of people. Let's say you have some sort of a team, or you have a work team, or you've got something. Almost anything that I talk about can be created into a workshop. It could be a one hour, a two hour, and so I encourage you to think about that. Like. If you've got people that um, you think could benefit from the things we talk about here, just give me a call because I would be happy to do that. So this actually came out of my um, workbook, the companion workbook. Oh, Deanne, what is going on? So she has to watch the recording. Well, it'll be there for you, friend. I, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on between us today, but I get, it's coming through. So this is good. So you'll be able to see your recording. Okay. So this today's topic is coming straight out of the companion workbook that I wrote. There's it's called the Groove Finders Guide series. There's 14 guides and 14 different topics. This is one particular one that also has been expanded into a larger workshop because um, I have a lot of girlfriends and women in my world, um, women not in my world. Let's be real, just women in general that uh, we fall prey to being people pleasers. So hands up. Yeah, give me some sort of an emoji or something if you identify as a people pleaser. Just generally meaning like you really don't like to disappoint people. Um, and this is all in the context of being asked to do things. So I don't know, again, about you guys in your small towns. I have no shortage of options of where I can devote my time, my energy, and my attention. I am continually asked for um for, to to donate my time to volunteer to be on boards to be in groups it is constant and i think again for those of us that are living in a small town if you are the type of woman that i want to work with meaning you have you have an achievement drive you're um maybe a little type a you don't have to be type a for me to want to hang with you but it's one of those things where you have this kind of achievement orientation right you vibe at a high frequency you have kind of a go-getter, a mover and shaker attitude about the world, you are going to be a target for every group in your community, right? And that's, and that's great. That's an awesome thing. So you have been identified as a person that has a lot to contribute. You have a lot to give. And Jesse's like, hands up. Love it. Okay. And Jesse cannot be the only one. So let's see some hands or some like, do you, does that resonate with you? You're going to be a target for a lot of um, opportunities, opportunities, but your time and not only time, this is never ever in my mind, just an, a time management issue. This is an energy management issue. We have, we have limited energy and that, that's not just time related. It's not just that there's only so many hours in the day. This is about the fact that we have to be smart about where we expend our precious energy and attention, especially if you're raising a family, right? Like there's there's legitimate pulls for our time and our energy and our attention. And so today I wanna talk about just, okay, so let me just back up a little bit. We're, we're on the monthly topic of motivation, okay? So where this comes into play for me is that, um, and why I think this was a topic that made sense to fit with motivation, is because so many of us, especially if we um, connect or that idea of being a people pleaser resonates with us, so many of us are saying yes because we are motivated motivated by the need to please other people or more, more accurately to not disappoint people. So again, it's like if you're like, oh, I'm not a people pleaser, I'm okay, I just, but I really don't like to upset people. You're a people pleaser then, right? And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's only a problem if you are the only person not being pleased by the things and the opportunities that you're saying yes to. So 
I am not the first person to discuss this. There have been lots and lots of gurus and professional development experts that have talked about this. In fact, Shonda Rhimes, the creator of um, Scandal and uh, she's Grey's Anatomy too. Um, she wrote a book called, I think The Year of Yes is what it's called. Um, that whole idea of that it should, okay, and then another person, I think it might have been Jen Hatmaker said that if it's not a hell yes, then it should be a no. I fall somewhere in the middle of that discussion because I think sometimes my yeses aren't all hell yeses and that doesn't mean they should be no's. Because also there, I think something we need to think about and balance is the, the fact that some things, even things that have obligation, we hate the word obligation because nobody wants to feel forced or um, like they have to do something, like we always have a choice. But there are some things that you you know in your heart because you have a serv maybe you have a servant's outlook on the world that you're gonna say yes to, and it's not like a hell yes, but you feel good doing it anyway. Okay, so I just feel like there's a lot of emotion that comes into how we determine if we say yes or if we say no, and the whole thing with motivation is I don't ever want you to be externally motivated to give up your precious time, energy, and attention. We need to always take an internal approach. Like, what is it that is, what is it doing for me? And what are the reasons for me in my heart that are making me say yes to this or no to this? Okay. So I haven't seen a comment since Jesse's hand up. So somebody give me something to go on just so I can be sure that, you know, you can still hear me and see me and we're not having issues with recording because that would make me very sad. So I'll sip some coffee. You guys throw down some thoughts about what I've said thus far and we'll move into the four questions. Okay. Because poor Deanne couldn't watch. I'm seeing all sorts of Shelly saying good morning. Good morning. We've got, I see like little emojis coming up, but not nothing in the comments. Okay, so just know that I'm still like totally freaking out that you guys can't actually hear me. Oh, Nicole. There we got a hand up. Nice. Okay, so you guys are hanging with me. So let's get into it. There, and these again... There are other time management, energy management hacks, and there's more to the topic of how to say no than just these things. But these are four really great questions to ask yourself because more than likely you already have a full, full to overflowing, maybe semi-full to overflowing plate. Like you are a busy person already, likely, right? Especially if you're the type of person I, I kind of identified at the beginning. If you are high energy, if you get things done. And if you are known for being that person, for sure you have no shortage of options for where to spend all of your time. So again, this is about looking, so thinking about the fact that these are, when you get a new opportunity now, and I would even say, um, if you've got current obligations on your list or on your, in your, you know, your, your calendar, and you feel these things as you have to get ready to go to those meetings or, um, you real, we really need to analyze, the, is this something I should continue to devote my time to? So it's really something you can apply, these four questions you can apply to both current obligations and the new ones that come your way. Good morning, Dee. Okay, the first question is, does this align with my gifts? Okay, so here's the deal, ladies. We all are equipped with some set of unique skills and, and talents, if you will. And the things that we can really genuinely consider our gifts are the things that we do really well that we don't even think about. So it's the kinds of things where, and again, I think there's a few cues to know, how do I know what my gifts really are? Other people tell you that you're really good at it. And it'll be the kind of thing where you're, you'll, they'll tell you that and you'll be like, huh, really? Isn't everybody good at that? And the truth is, no, not everybody is. And that's what makes it your gift, okay? So asking yourself this question does um, a couple of things. First, it gives you pause because, again, if you are a high achieving, achievement oriented, high vibing kind of woman, people are going to say, oh, you'd be great at that. They're going to say that to you. You'd be great at that. Oh, my gosh, you'd be so amazing. You could do this and you could do that. And you have to shut down that external chatter and ask yourself, but does it really align with what I feel gifted to do? Because if it doesn't, it maybe should be a no, or at least at this point, a maybe. Okay, so the first question is, does it truly, does whatever the obligation or the opportunity is, does it truly align with your gifts? Number two, 
we don't ask ourselves this question enough at all. Will it bring me joy of some sort? So here's where the trick is for um, the, the real, true, deep down people pleasers is that we often will tell ourselves that we feel joy in serving other people, okay? So of course that you'll get that immediate hit of joy because you're gonna say yes to this person that's been tasked with finding <laughs> board members or committee members or whatever. And you're gonna look at them and you're gonna be like, yes, I feel really good because look how happy they are. That has nothing to do with the work of what it is that you're gonna be doing once you say yes. And okay, to be clear, sometimes you don't know, right? We can't, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know exactly what it's all gonna entail. But those are the questions you need to ask up front. We need to find out, like, how much time is this really going to take of me? What is, what are you really looking for? What is this person, this position? What is it, what do you really need? Those kinds of things. You find those out. And then in number two, you have to say to yourself, will that, will doing that on a consistent, regular basis, whatever the position or the, the opportunity looks like, will it bring me joy? And the reason we don't ask that enough is because we think it seems selfish. And you know what, maybe it is, but let's be real. This is your time and your energy and your focus. And it is a limited resource. Whatever we give to something else means we're giving it up for whatever other things we may wanna do. So it should bring us joy or we will not be, we are not the best candidate for it, okay? Number three is can I and will I do the work out of a loving place in my heart? So here is where there's a huge difference between being motivated to do something by guilt and obligation, which sometimes, like I said at the beginning, it sometimes does play a role, but it's a completely different thing to say, I want to give my time and my, my energy and my attention over to this. You know, I'll just, I'll give a, a good example of this. Just recently in my own home, my husband just is finishing his third term or third year of a first year term on our school board. And throughout his term, there were, you know, there were things that came up. He was struggling and trying to decide, do I run again? And at some point I just looked at him and I said, it has to come down to whether or not you really want to give yourself over to this. It isn't about who's running against you. It isn't about even who's currently on the board necessarily. It is about the work of the board itself. And if you cannot do it out of love, you need to say, no, he actually chose not to run, ironically. Um, but that is a, and a really important question is, is that come, is the work coming from a place of obligation and duty and guilt feeling bad? Or is it coming from a place of genuine love? Like I can contribute. I can add value. I know that this is a good place for me to be. And then number four, which um, I kind of alluded to this earlier, is can I add this to my life without sacrificing something of greater importance? Again, the struggle with this question is that so many of us have so many things on our plates. It's like, well, what's greater importance? I will suggest a, a, an exercise for you. And I've, I've taken workshop um, participants through this. I've taken groove schoolers through this. That if you don't know what your personal values are and you don't have it, that as a, like a compass, a moral compass for how you make these kinds of decisions, that is an excellent place to start. Because seriously, if we don't know the values, the personal values that we hold dear to ourselves, we it's pretty hard to say, like, does this thing fit with those or not? Because you don't even really know. And you might think, oh, I know what my values are. And everyone says family, family first, right? Well, if that's 100% true, we would never take on anything that took us away from our families. So what do we really care about? What do we really value? And it is really important to get clear about that, again, especially if you identify as the, the person I described when we started and you're in a small town. Because again, when you vibe high like that, people see you as a go-getter, people see you as a mover and a shaker, and they're gonna be like, ask her, ask her, ask her. And you're literally gonna get accosted in the grocery store. Like, that's what happens. At least that's what, I mean, it happens to me. I'm sure it happens to you, if you can, if that relates, you know, to your experience at all. So it's always about saying, okay, I know that this is gonna take X amount of time and, and again, energy from me. Can I add this without sacrificing something that I say matters? Okay, so that's what I've got for you, those four questions. Does it need to be a hell yes? Mm, I don't know. I don't know how I really feel about that. Gosh, I wish you guys would weigh in, tell me what you think. But I do know that these four questions are a really great place to start. And again, you can use them to look at your current set 
of, of um, not contributions, commitments. And then of course, when new ones come your way, it's almost like a filter that you can filter the, the opportunity through to say, does this really, am I going to serve in the best way and will it serve my life the best way that it can? So again, to recap, number one, does it align with my gifts? the things I am inherently gifted at doing. Number two, will it bring me joy? Will I actually enjoy the work? Number three, will I do the work out of love? Like is my reason for doing it based on the belief of the value I can add or is it because I don't wanna make anybody upset? And then number four, can I add it without sacrificing something of greater importance? Okay, so I, 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 I this is the one thing, um, there's there's no, no way around this that how we spend our time indicates what we care about. So that's that can be a real gut check sometimes because we all it's this badge of honor to say like I'm busy, right? We we walk around you know that's list just listen to conversation especially between women and you say hey you know Jayette hey how's it going and Jayette's right away she's like oh I'm good but I'm so busy, and then we all talk about how busy we are. Busy is a relative term, of course. Um, you could talk about it in the size of the plate. I worked with a lady once that got very overwhelmed with a very small number of things, and everyone got really annoyed with her. And I finally looked at a couple people that were constantly nagging about her, and I said, she just has a smaller plate than you do. Like, it fills up, and it's legitimately full to her, but her plate's smaller. So, like, quit beating her up for, you know, yeah, would it be nice if she could take on more stuff at once? Okay, so we all have different size plates. And the relative fullness of it is something that we get to choose. So all I can say is that this really seriously matters. And maybe it doesn't feel like it. It sounds like, well, it's easy to say no. If it were easy to say no, none of this would even, we wouldn't even be talking about this. It's difficult. So let's see, Jesse said, I've been asked to get on three boards in the last year. I'm on the hospital board and another one already. I said no, obviously. And for the first time ever, you started saying no. And it is so powerful because Again, like I'll, I'll tell you, I was actually asked <laughs> in our small community if I'd consider running for mayor. <laughs> uh, and I just laughed. I was like, uh, uh, no, 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 you know, for various reasons. But yeah, I too, Jesse, am on several boards. And I thought, how on earth am I going to add? I mean, not only that, but like anything. I actually took a break from serving on all boards at our church. You want to talk about guilt? That is a really tricky thing, right? But I'm still, I still go to church and I still support the boards and I help them with the things they need help with, but I'm not serving in a board position because of the specific things I've taken on in our community. And Cheryl said, saying no is a freeing feeling and it really is. And I think, so if you feel shackled and you feel too busy, take an honest look at how and where you're spending your time. And and recognize that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. That is where the hell yes really should kind of come in. It's like, I could do it. Yeah, maybe I'd be okay at that. Or even even when it's one of those things that you really want to do, that's also a challenge of being a person that like wants to help with everything. It may even be that you want to say yes, but we've got to get really clear and, and articulate what it is that we care about. Do that with your values. And then ask yourself these four questions just to be sure that the size of your plate, no matter how big it is or small it is, that it doesn't fill up and make you feel frenzied and crazy. Because that is not living. That is not living. And it is not, we all have to have some white space in our lives. And so calendars cannot be overflowing or life sucks, frankly. Okay, so I would love to hear um, any of you guys that watch this on replay. I would love to hear which one kind of resonates with you the most, which one you're going to start asking, which which of the four you're actually going to look at and assess against your current commitments. Because, again, I say this all the time, ladies, that all of you that hang out with me, I love it so much. But if we're not doing anything with this stuff, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so with that, I will remind you um, again that day in and day out, really our success, whatever we achieve, is a sum of the small habits that we that we take every single day. And habits are one of those things that sometimes we don't even realize why or how they've come about. And that is why I created a five-day experience called Force of Habit. And it starts a week from today. It's a five-day experience where you're gonna get a video and a worksheet 
um, related to that day's topic sent right to your inbox and there's like work that we're gonna do every single day. And then we'll have a live video at noon every single day of that five days to help you learn this framework for de developing daily powerful habits. Habits are seriously like the most underrated, underappreciated, undernoticed thing in our lives. And they are the thing that make all the difference. So if that sounds like something that you want to learn how to do, because the coolest thing about the framework is that it can be applied to anything. We're going to look at one area of your life. You're going to get to pick it. You can pick whatever it is. But then once you know it, you can apply it again and again and again. And so I highly encourage you not only to enroll for yourself, it's totally free. Um, Secondly, find your buddies. Bring your buddies along because, again, habits, it's really all we are. So I wanted to remind you of that before we go today. But um, as always, I'm so thankful to spend every Monday morning with you guys. It totally makes, it's the best start to my week. So thank you for always live jamming with me. I love you guys. And until I see you next Monday, groove on, everyone. Okay, we'll talk to you all soon.